I hope you'll treasure up what you've been listening to. things that's went through my mind while I've been here tonight. And Brother Jerry was blessed to sing that song. and I was glad to hear him sing it again. I, he's had problems. And I thought it was beautiful. And I leaned over and told Brother Delbert, and maybe some of you all may know, that's a, that's a song that's been sung in the Baptist family now for a few years. The first person I ever hear singing was Brother Jerry Manns when I was a boy. He actually was the first man that ever sung that song among the Baptist family. And I remember as a boy, you know, things good and things bad stick in your mind. And I remember as a boy, he sang that song and they would rejoice all over the house. Yeah. But then I remember some whispering and saying, you shouldn't sing that song. That's a radio song. That's a shirt pocket song, I think. That's what they called it, maybe. I was just a little boy, young boy, but I remember that so well. And I thought, even as a child, I thought, any song that gives God glory should be good. That's right. And you know, that's the way it is. You see, we are so caught up sometimes in tradition mm -hmm. and traditional things that we lose sight on what we really are to be doing. And that is loving one another and that is serving God. He said, if you don't, if you don't love me, if you don't love your brother who you see, yeah. how can you love me who you not that see? Like, That's what the Scripture teaches us today. So if we're loving one another... We're doing His will. If we're letting our light shine, we're doing His will. How do you let your light shine? Is it put on a suit coat? No. Is it get your hair cut? No. It's showing love one to another. That is your life today. It's love. And if you have this, that's how you know you are His today. You've got that feeling. And somebody may say, well, how will I know? How would I know that God has saved me? I, I get that question asked a lot by young people and they're serious about it. How will I know? Well, you're the one that will know. Yes. And as these brethren have been preaching so wonderfully, to fear God is the beginning of wisdom. Mm -hmm. Why? What makes you wise? You know that He is the Creator. He created all things. In Him we have our being. Without Him, we have no being. So we should fear Him who gives us life. Why? And He is to be adorned and loved and cherished. He said, let everything that has bread praise ye the Lord. And so then that's what we are commanded to do is give Him honor and give Him glory. That's why I love these young brethren and I wish and I am ashamed and I've said it many times. I wish, Sister Mindy, when we was at the store working, I wished I'd turned my heart to Him then. I wish I would have. But I didn't. But I'm thankful today that His mercy still found me. Yeah. And He had mercy on my soul. I'm glad of that tonight. Who is this man? Yeah. It's Jesus Christ. Yeah. It's Jesus Christ. This sister asked me to sing this song and I'll, I'll do my best. I... I love the Lord. The Scripture teaches us, and there's a little song, I love the Lord because He first loved me. I love the Lord. How He loved me before I was even lovable. He loved me before I was even known here. Why do you say that? He died. He made a way that we can live forever in a land. And that's, that's worth it all. That is amazing grace. That is His love. That is His mercy today. 
It's, it's shown not to just these people in the mountains. It's shown all over the world. He's God. He's everywhere. He's everywhere. He, the writer said, if I take the wings of an eagle, or maybe a dove, or an eagle, I guess, and fly to the other most parts of the earth, the Lord is there. He said, if I make my bed in hell, the Lord is there. You see, He is everywhere. And if you die and go to hell, you'll know about Him down there. You'll know that you failed to honor Him and to give Him the glory and come to Him. It's our whole duty, as Brother Randy said, our whole duty of man. I hope you'll pray. And I hope the Lord will bless me tonight. Again, I'm just a man. And it takes the Spirit of God to bless a man, to preach a man, to sing, to pray. It ain't in us. It ain't in me, I know. But it does come down. It does come down from Him. And I do know one thing, Brother Jerry, I do believe I have preached the Gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe I know when I feel His love. And I know when I feel His presence. I believe I know I've passed from death unto life. Do you know that, Brother Ronnie? Why do you know that? I love my brother. That's what the Scripture teaches us. And if you got love one for another, then you got God's love down in your heart. You know then that I am what I say I am. And I am His. And He is mine today. Pray for a moment of time. Who's that yonder in the distance? Whose garments white as snow? Who with the voice? That sounds like thunder walking on the streets yes, of gold. His appearance is like lightning <laughs> sitting high upon his throne. Over ten thousands. Times ten thousand shouting, we find we made it home. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lamb forevermore. Praise the holy name of Jesus. Bless the Lord, oh my soul, oh my soul. In that city, there's a table seated where the saints of old, with all their troubles all behind them, were they'll have. To want no more. In that city, there's a river flowing from God's golden throne. For the tree of life is blooming where the half has not been told. Glory, glory. Hallelujah. Praise the Lamb forevermore. Praise the holy name of Jesus. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. In that city, there's the table. Seated with all the saints of old, all their troubles, there's behind them, where they'll have to want no more. I'm 
going back in the morning. I'm gonna live forevermore. Walk the streets of gold with Jesus in that city that's filled for squares. There's no more tears in that city. Did we'll have to be away? There's no more trials, no more heartache. It's a land of perfect praise. Glory, glory, hallelujah. Praise the Lamb forevermore. Praise the holy name of Jesus. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. My mind is very blank this evening I, on what to preach on. Thought about a lot of things and a lot of things crossed my mind. And I heard a man that I love today. I, he's, he's dead and gone. Someone put a little recording of him on Facebook. and I loved going over to his store and talking to him. He lived in Knox County. And maybe I'll talk a few minutes with Ronnie. Maybe the Lord will bring something to my mind. And, and maybe it's not for me to preach tonight. I don't know. But we, we'll, we'll, it's best known unto the Lord anyway. But the, I, I was listening to him today and, and how, he, how he mentioned a man that, uh, that I'd heard of a lot, but I, I never had. I never had met him, but it brought another fella rich to my mind. And he said, uh, uh, there was a fella, he said that he wanted to ride with him and to church. And he said, uh, I think he was an Isom, his last name. And he said, you know, uh, he, he, he couldn't read and he couldn't write. Uh, this man couldn't. Uh, Brother B.J., he said, uh, and he said, he, and, he, and he didn't dress real well. He was kind of a, a raggedy tag fella, I guess, dressed the way he put it. Uh, Brother Jerry, and, and he said, but when the Spirit of the Lord would come on him and begin to, he, he began to preach, uh, he said he looked beautiful uh, and the sound was unmatched uh, uh, like him. And I thought about an old man that lived up the creek here uh, a long time ago. Uh, uh, he's been dead a few years uh, and his name was Milford Adams. Uh, and, and you know him, Brother Jerry, many do. Uh, and how he didn't have a car uh, to drive. Uh, he didn't have a fine home to live in. Uh, but every home that had a death in it, you'd find that old man there. He wore little overhauls, didn't he, Rich? Walking up and down the road. Always had a little smile on his face. Probably didn't have or draw much money, but he had something that I, as a young man, didn't understand. But I come to know what that man had and what made him smile. He didn't have a fine home that we all have today. He didn't have a, a big car. He didn't have that. What did what made him smile? I, I go down, Brother BJ. Every night this man laid down. He had the Lord in his heart. And he could look up to heaven and say, Oh, how do you see my mansions over there? Oh. Do you see my king over there? My captain, if you will. Today, Brother Ron, it is Memorial Day. And we read in history books of many soldiers and how they fought for this country here and how they died. But oh, I'm here tonight in our army tonight. And I want to talk to you about my captain how sweet he is I want to talk to you about my captain how he how he went the way brother Ron to Calvary's hill as brother D train said gave his life for you and I I want to tell you about his love he has so much love a little woman one day he wanted to see him. oh if I could 
she said, oh, I'm sick here. I've been everywhere. I want to touch you. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure the train. Then you wanted to touch you. Yeah. Seven yeah. If I could just get a groan through yeah. the hymns, what I thought, I know everything will be okay. This man, this little woman, she went everywhere, Sister Mindy. She wanted to be healed. And, and, and she went year after year to every doctor she knew to go. I spent all of her money, the Bible says, but still no cure for her. But oh, she heard about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Have you heard? about Jesus. Yeah, We've all heard of him, but have you talked to him yeah, tonight? Yeah, yeah. Have you met him on your journey? Yeah. Uh, this little woman did. All oh, many gathered around. No way, no way uh, she's going to get to him. Oh, I've got to get to him. It's my life. Uh, uh, my friend, uh, Brother Randy, uh, they would say, you don't need to go here that. You don't need to go to church. Come on over here. Let's go over here. We're going to have a big time over here. You need to come over here. Oh, my soul was in trouble. I wanted something that I couldn't get on my own. Where could I go to find this? Oh, I'll tell you where I found it at. On my knees in my little bathroom. One night, I cried my knee unto the Lord, and He heard my cry, and He delivered me from a dead state to a lively hope in Him. Mm -hmm. He's sweet, he's sweet to my taste. Mm -hmm. This little woman, she said, if I can just touch him, just the hem of his garment, she must have got low over the rung to touch him. Oh, but she made her way through the crowd. Oh, and she began to go. And when she touched him, he knew about it. And she knew about it. Immediately, she felt a change come. That night on my knees, I felt a change come. I didn't know how good he was until I tasted of him. And now I've tasted of him, I know how good he is. So if you want to know about him, how will I know? Oh, when you taste him, yeah. you'll know it's him. You'll know it's him. This little woman, Jesus turned and he said, Somebody has touched me for the devil. And, and his disciples around him, Lord, they're touching you all over. Uh, look at the crowd in my word. No, 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 no. Uh, somebody has touched me. I feel virtue has gone out of me. And the little woman, uh, she had to confess, didn't she? Oh, Lord, it was me. I've been looking for you. Oh, I've heard about you. I wanted to touch you. My word. Uh, you know what uh, he did to her? He healed her body and he healed her soul. I'll tell you what, it's not so important that he heals your body, but it's important that he healed your soul. Amen. Because heaven, as these brethren have been talking about, preaching about, is real. And hell, as they've been talking about and preaching about, is real also. Amen. Both is real. And it's important for us as Christians to tell men and women, there's a better way than the ways of this world. Amen. There's a better way. God will take care of His people. Yes, He will. I can read the army that came out of Egypt. I can read where their shoes never wore out. They didn't have a lot of money for the journey. They, they didn't have a lot. But they was trusting in the Lord. And those that trust in Me shall be like a tree that's planted by the river's edges. By the water. Why? Oh, there's a little water there. There's a little water there. If there's water there. There's life there. And there's life forevermore there. I'll tell you, that army that traveled out of Egypt, I thought a lot about them. How they traveled through the desert, through the heat, and through the cold. And how he fed them from the D-train. 
We've all read the story, haven't we? How they fed them as they got hungry, as he fed them on their journey. And when they got thirsty, how he... And they had a little rock there, didn't they? I claim Jesus has always been. I, I yes, think sir. He's been yes, right with the Father from the beginning, Brother yes, Jerry. Yes. I believe He was that rock in the desert land yes, yes. that He struck. I believe you strike Him today. You get a drink of water that you'll live forever. I believe He was there when the little woman was at the well and said, Sir, are you greater than our father Jacob? Oh, oh brother, so. how sweet He is He's greater than Jacob. Yes, yes. Jacob dug his well. And she told him, Lord, Jacob dug his well, our father, and we're still drinking out of it today. Yes. Oh, he, he, he made the way on the cross for the journey yes. over 2,000 years ago. Yes. I've got to drink of that water that's still flowing today. He's greater than Jacob, I'm telling yes. you tonight. He's the one that died for me. And he's mine and I'm his. And that's why my captain, oh, I wish you'd see the army that I see now. She's beautiful. She's wide and dressed. And she's dressed in a long white robe. She's ready to go when he trains. She's following the captain. Yes, sir. Thank you, Lord. I'll tell you what. Yeah, Isaiah said, I saw a train. And that's her. Oh, have you seen her? Oh, look around. I've seen her before. When she's all dressed up, when she's rejoicing, when she's on the mountain. Oh, what's she doing? She's looking to the captain. She's looking to her beloved. No wonder the rider said, His left hand is under my head. His right one doesn't embrace me. He calls me to come away. He took me into his banqueting house one night. He held his banner over me. It was love. If it wasn't love, I'd been a sinking on down today. But he picked my feet out of the mari clay. And he set them on a solid rock. And that rock is him too. So it's all in him. It's all him. Who is this army? It's the children of God. It's the children of God. And they're all over this world. There are. How do you know? How do you know? He tells us here. He tells us He died for all. And He said He's going to bring them all from the four corners of the earth. And how many away from here? I live during the week in Lexington. There's not too many people, Brother Ron, he's heard of an old rector Baptist. They think I'm choir when I say that. They probably think I'm choir when I don't say nothing. But that's okay. That's okay. You know, he said, God's got people. What, what's the difference in the people, though? You know, I, there's, a little, there's a little thing these boys laugh about it. Brother Randy's brother's funeral. They got it mixed up. And there's the video is me singing on there. And there's probably 100,000, maybe 75,000 views on it. And I laugh at the comments. Some says, never heard singing like that, it's pretty. Some says, man, what's wrong with that fellow? He can't sing a lick. <laughs> he, he don't even have a guitar. <laughs> he don't even have a guitar. There's no music. What's wrong with him? You see, there's people all over this world. And we're not going to reach everybody in our little way. But God has men all over the world that can reach people that can reach people that we can't reach. But I've always said, I'm glad I was born and raised among the people I'm around. I'm glad I'm in the hill country today. I love His ways. I love His voice. There's a little song that says, I love, I love my Father's voice. I love His home. I, I long to be around His people. There is a people that I love. And they're here. The majority of them are here in the mountain here. Now they all don't love me and that's okay. God put a love in me and I love everybody. As all do. As all do. And those all don't though I guess. But all should. I'll say it that way. They do. But the true children of God do love one another. 
Now there's not everything that says Lord, Lord is going to heaven. It's not. It's not. And everything that a fellow, my dad taught me a lesson in the store when I was pretty young. And then he knew what was going to happen and he said to me, he said, son, not everything shines as gold. And I just, that's always stuck with me. Not everything shines as gold. So there's men that will let you down in life. They are. There's men that you put confidence in and they turn out they're not what they say they was. There's men that loves to put other men down. But God will never put you down. He will always hold you up. God will let you know what you are and what you need to be through Him and what you can be through Him. Isn't it wonderful the ones that knows God? Isn't it wonderful to feel His love with all around you sometimes? Well, I think in life, and I've only been a Christian now for eight years, but I've been to church all my life. Heard my dad preach for 40-some years. Todd, when I started to pray, I was so confused and so tore up and so ashamed because I said, Lord... I'd get by myself and say, Lord, I should know. I should know. I don't even know how to pray to You. I don't even know what to say. Except I'm guilty. I'm guilty. Have mercy on me, Lord. He set a fear up in me then that let me know where I was going to if I didn't call on Him. And I called on Him night and day. I'd get on my car. I'd get away from everybody. I wanted to talk to the Lord. It seemed like I was getting worse and worse instead of better. But in reality, looking back, I was getting better because I was drawing closer to Him. He said to fear God is beginning of wisdom. Departing from evil is understanding. So it's more than to call on Him. You'll have to change. You'll have to start a change. When you start the change, He will do the change. It takes the Lord. We can't do it on our own. We can't, and I'm not saying that, but He surely will. He surely will. But I think back in my lowest points in life, I've always known He was there. I've always known He was there. I think so far the hardest times in my life that I've faced has been the death of my father and the death of my sister. And I've been with Dad probably to hundreds of funerals growing up. And I'd see people cry and I'd cry. And I thought I knew something about it. But I didn't know what pain was until I lost them too. But looking back, I, I, I know that heaven is worth striving for. Yeah. And I love, love what I've been told. Not only by that, but many men. I think a lot about people I've met on my journey. Brother Ivan is who I was talking about. His name was Ivan Amberby. And I went to his store often as a young man just to hear him talk because he talked just so plain, but a little different too, I guess, than most that I was used to listening to. He said things to me then that I thought, no, that had never happened, but I'm seeing them today. He told me things that would happen even in the church that I thought, no, that would never happen, that I've seen it today. He said there was a church when he was a boy, the largest church in the old regular Baptist was in the Thornton Union at one time. It had 800 and some members. At that time, he said, you know how many is in that church today? Zero. The doors are closed. The doors are closed. Why? Why? If you don't keep God first, then He can remove the candlestick. Oh, yeah. And if He removes the candlestick, it don't matter how mighty you are. Without the Spirit of the Lord, you can't draw. You can't draw. And He said, you know what? He said, we have failed. We have failed. The old rector Baptist has failed. The people I love. He said, because we've not reached out. We've not reached out enough and done what we ought to do. Now, you may say, what is it that we need to do? And I'll bring my remarks to a close. I know I'm done preaching, but he said it starts with every individual. Yes, it has to start. We make a difference. We make a difference. If I do my job, 
Brother BJ does his job. We'll draw people together. But if we don't, we won't. We won't. You see, that's why we say, we stand here, we need you. We need your children. Why? Because we do believe that the Spirit of the Lord is here in this little house. We do believe that, that we serve an awesome God. We do believe that His ways are far above our ways. We still believe we're still learning about Him. I read of Paul in the Bible when he was getting ready to die. You know what was on his mind? He was telling Paul they're going, to, they're going to crucify you in a few days. Your days are numbered. You know what he was thinking? He was saying, Lord God, oh Jesus, how can I draw closer to You? How can I draw closer to You? He wasn't worried about where the jury is lying. He was still trying to draw closer to the Lord. The man. He said, I want to learn so much more about Him. How do we do that? Pray a little more. Pray a little more. I love this little church. I love you. But God, I didn't die for you. Jesus Christ died for you. He loves you far better than I can. And I love you. But He is God. And besides Him, there is none other. Or else the writer said, who else can we look to? You but you, Lord. Seeing you have the words of eternal life. When Jesus asked them the question, who does men say I am? And they said, well, some says you're Elias. Some say you're John the Baptist. He said, but who do you say I am? You see, he asked Peter the question, who do you say I am? See, it's not important what the world says he is, but who is he to you? He is my leader. He is my guide. And I'm following him all the way down through the walks of life. I've wasted so much time in my past. I don't have time for foolishness. I don't have time for men to argue about which way is right. I know which way is right. He hung on the cross yes. over 2,000 years ago. And it's not my way. It's not for the jury's way. It's His way. And if we can't go His way, we're not going to where He's at tonight. And I want to go, when I lay down the walks of this life, I want the world still to know whose side I'm on. I'm on the side of Jesus Christ. Because when I wake, it's memorial time. And the graveyards look beautiful, don't they? But all oh, I read where God visits men and women. But you just wait a little while when He comes back to visit again. He's going to visit these little graveyards. And you talk about beauty then. Yeah. A springing up from the grave. And you talk about a beautiful sight then. The greatest army that the world has ever known is going to rise first. And there are those that are left. They're going to see them. And they're going to bow to Jesus Christ. But they'll never see the face of God, you see. Because only the pure in heart shall see God. But they're going to see His Son. And they're going to see what they missed out on. And they're going to see the nail prints. They're going to see the man that came for them. But you turned him away. It'd be awful to hear that, wouldn't it? Now, there's a little song that says this. Please, sir, search the book again. It says, One night I dreamed I died and went to heaven above. I stood outside the eastern gate. Then a man from within, uh, he said to me, Have you been born again? And your name written in the Lamb's book of life. And the, right, and the man said in the dream, he said, I said, No, sir, please. Search the book again. I thought my name was there. I went to church every Sunday, though I never kneeled in prayer. But please, he said, I told him about all the good things I've done while I lived here. And he said, but is your name written in the Lamb's book of life? Have you been born again, the song says. And he said, oh, look at all these trophies I've won while I was on earth. Oh, but have you been born again? Look at all. I, you may say, I drove the church bus every Sunday. I went and visited the sick. But I am not born again. <coughs> then you're lost forever. You see, it's not so important. It's not what we did. It's what He did for us. Us. And it's for us to say, Lord, it is all in You. And my trust is in You. And my faith is in You. And when you turn your heart to Him that way, He'll do what Amen. you can't do. Amen. And He'll save your soul. And that's the sweetest promise that we'll ever have in life. It's Him. It's Him. 
I don't want you to be like that song. Please. You heard the brother. The brother can look for him a song, but you heard the brother, Brother Stephen Tate, brother down in Arkansas to state police that comes here a lot. Good, good friend of ours. You, you heard him here. You heard him tell the story about he met his wife, Mindy. It's her name, Mindy. And he said, I, I joined the church. Mindy was such a good person. And I joined the church. And he said, I was sitting in church and I thought I was a Christian. I thought I was okay. He said, Todd, I was sitting there and he said, a man started preaching and it came over me and the voice spoke to me just right in my heart. And said, oh son, you're not right. You're not right. But you can be if you're calling me. He said, I realized I wasn't right. And you know what he did? He said, I'd get in my police car and I'd go up and down the road. He said, I wouldn't pull anybody over, Rich. He said, I'd just cry. Lord, Lord, have mercy on me. I thought I was right. Lord, I, I thought I was right. And I want to be right. He said, just a little while, the sweetest feeling come over his heart and his soul and his mind, all over his body. Yes, son, now you are. Now you are. You give me your life. If you give him your life, you obtain life. But if you seek for your life, you'll lose your life. That's what the record says anyway. Yes. I hope to